right. Welcome everybody this morning. Those listening on YouTube or on the podcast, welcome to everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about a movie, The Lion King. I think most people have watched the movie, the old one back in the day, the cartoon one. And then Disney brought out this new version that looks so good. I mean, if you watch the new version, I actually when I watched it again this week, I was thinking, man, how can they make it any better? Because, I mean, the way those animals look, they look like real animals. I don't know how they can make it even better in 10 years' time to make it even look more real. But I just thought I want to use this uh, movie that Disney made to, to show you something about the law. Years ago, when we went to our men's camps, there was a guy called Neil Flavis Cockney. And always when he spoke to the men, he used the Lion King as a point of reference to what he was saying. And it always stuck to me back in those, and I'm talking about what, 10 years ago, 11 years ago. And ever since that, the Lion King's movie had a special meaning for me because I understood something in the movie that plays a huge role in my life. So I always, when I look at Lion King the movie, I look at it through those eyes. Years ago, so that thing stuck to me, and, and it was something very special. So, for me, when I watch Lion King, you can ask my children, I like, cry a lot. Because I, I don't look at this through the eyes of what the movie is doing. I see something different in the movie that's hidden in the movie. And when you become more mature in your spiritual life, the Lord will give you or show you His heart, His. Is everything sometimes like even a, a worldly movie? You can speak to that when you are mature enough to hear when you, when you want to speak to a movie to you, even though it's got nothing spiritual in the movie, maybe. So, today we're going to use the reference of The Lion King. Um, I want to use this movie so that you can see something that, something beautiful that we can walk in. This is a classic tale, we all know the tale about a lion, a young lion that gets born. And I want you to see, every time we look at this little lion that's on this journey, you must put yourself in the place of the little lion. So when you, when you see Simba, then you know I'm talking to my lion. When you see Simba, I'm talking to Sonica, Kara, Green. Put yourself in Simba's shoes through the story to see something that's, that's hidden in the story. I want the story to speak to your heart so that you can see something beautiful hidden in this thing. So this movie starts with this little boy called Simba that are born and he's brought in front of the whole of the creation that's there, the wild. He's brought in front of the wild to be shown that this is a new baby that's born. So if you make it for yourself personal, that scene, it's the day when you got born again. You're on display. All right, the day you got born again. That's your day when you get born again. That's what Simba's day when he was born again. You know the scene in the movie. I mean, the Bible even says that when, when a sinner gets repents, uh, the whole of creation, there is it. Even so, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. When gets born again in that movie, when the baby lion is born, all the animals gather and they rejoice because of the one that's born. And that's what happens to you the day you get born again. So, Simba is shown to everybody the name Simba. I just went to, for curiosity's sake and I went to look at what do their names mean? Some of the characters in the story, what does the name mean? Who knows what Simba means? It's not Simba Chips. What does Simba mean? It means lion and strength, the name Simba. Because the people that, that uh, wrote the story, they went to look at the names and there's meaning in those names, that's why they chose those names for those characters. So lion, it means lion and strength. 
So when you get born again, what names do you get? You're a lion. Because your father's from where? From the tribe of Judah. And you walk in what? Strength. Because that's what a lion walks in. So, this is the image in the movie where Rafiki lifts up Simba to be shown. That's what happens when you get born again. Rafiki, that monkey at the back there, his name means friend. It's funny, there's somebody in the Bible that's also your friend. Things that happen in your Bible. Somebody that's got to do with, you know, who helps you, your helper, your friend, who guides you. But anyway, we'll get to that. Rafiki, whose name means friend, he's the one that lifts up Simba. All right. Unfortunately, some of us, when we get born again, the day we get born again, we look like this. We don't realize what happens actually, so we think it's something that looks like that. Huh? But here's look at those toes. Flex. Because we today, especially in Christianity, we don't know the beauty and what actually happens when you get born again. So we just make it a thing and move on. We don't see the beauty in it. We, we don't see the Lord in it. And that's what you actually look like. If you don't understand what, what happens. So, now in the story, this little boy, this lion, Simba, starts to walk with his father and are being taught wisdom. So in the movie, you will see they walk around and his dad starts teaching him wisdom. Shows him stuff. But in the shadows, there's an enemy. In the movie, we see it's a dark place. In the safari, it's a dark place um, where the enemy is. And the enemy's name is Scar. Scar is the enemy's name. And he's jealous of this baby that's born. Because why? This baby's getting a kingdom and he's not getting it. So he's very upset about that. Um, this baby is getting, getting a position in this kingdom which he wants and he can't get it. So he's going to make a plan. How can he get into that position of this kingdom that he doesn't have? He wants to take control of this, this kingdom. Scar starts plotting his plan how to, how to get into this kingdom and be king. At the end of the day, he wants to be king. So he starts to work on his master plan in setting up things in motion uh, to get into a position of rulership and leadership. Mufasa, the father of Simba, takes Simba to a high peak and says this famous but that we all know about everything the light touches. There, and he starts giving him wisdom. And he's walking with 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 Mufasa here. I'm going to play you a clip of this scene. I want you to listen. Remember, you the little lion, you the little one sitting here. That's you. He's speaking to you, and everything this clip is going to say is meant for you, as his newborn baby and be taught wisdom from the Father. So Mufasa is talking to you now. A true king searches for what he can give. Not what he can take. So he's get, he was taken up to this place. It's funny that also in the movie, that, that scene in the movie, look in Luke 4 verse 5. And he led him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, To thee will I give all these authority and the glory of them, for it hath been delivered unto me and to Abraham I will give. Yeah, Mufasa takes him up the mountain, up to this peak that looks over their whole kingdom. And he says, This is yours. Who in the Bible says it can be yours? 
the enemy. He's bringing a lie in. But when Pastor said, this is yours. Everything the lie touches. But where was the little Simba focusing and asking the question, where did he want to go? When he heard about this dark place, was we sometimes think we get born again and we can do whatever we want and we want to do things our way but you still that little lion there his dad knows it's dangerous to go to that dark place because he's not ready. His dad is not scared of the dark place. Just know that. He's not scared of the dark place. But he knows Simba's not ready to go there yet. So he's giving him wisdom. But what do we sometimes do? We don't want to listen to the more mature people because I can do what I want. And the dad says, you don't do it for what you can gain out of the thing. Anything. So, the is here busy sharing with some of this wisdom of how this life works, the dangers of this life, and he calls it a circle of life. And we are all in a circle of life, whether we want to believe it or not. The name Mufasa, who knows what that means? <coughs> it means king. The name Mufasa means king in the movie. So I want to make Mufasa Jesus or the father, whatever you want to use him for. As, so you can see who's the one helping you here, walking with you, giving you wisdom. So in the movie, the next thing that you start seeing happening, the hyenas enter into the scene. The hyenas, I call them the demons, the little demons that bug us the whole time. They're irritating, they're nothing. You remember the, the movie? The hyenas, they're actually nothing. They're only something that they, they move in a pack. But the hyenas step into the scene. Mufasa, he says he's got to go sort this out with the hyenas. But he tells Simba not to join him in this fight. So Mufasa is going to go to the hyenas now, which are causing problems. And Mufasa tells little Simba, this is not your fight yet. Right? Take note. It's not your fight yet. Why? Because Simba is too young. That's why when you get born again, you're not supposed to help people go through problems and stuff and face their problems. You are a baby person and you want to help another baby person go through their problems. You're not ready for that yet. And then we tell you don't do it because we know you're going to get hurt. You're not mature enough yet to deal with this thing. But remember Simba was saying, oh, if I'm king, I can do whatever I want. He wanted, he's got that mentality that we still have today. Simba's still too young. So, know this, that in the beginning of your journey as a believer, you are not ready for this stuff yet. You are just there to learn from the Father and from the other lights and the pride you are there to learn. You don't have to go fight. You don't even have to go get your own food. It will be given to you. You just stay there and learn. Be humble and learn. But what do we do? Most of the times believers do what Simba did. We go to the dark place. Because there's something calling us there to that dark place. And we were told by the Father not to go there, for good reason. But Simba went there, that sin nature kicks in, and he goes there. He's still functioning according to the old man that was still in sin before he was saved. 
he's still acting on that. And he goes to that dark plane. And because of that one decision he made to go to that dark place, Simba, a lot of problems, the whole story changes. If he never went to that dark place, there would not be a movie like Lion King because there would, nothing would have happened. But he went to that dark place and things started happening. Problems start happening. Major ones. Simba slowly starts slipping through these wrong things. Like some of us sometimes do after we get born again. We do our old sinful stuff. We do stuff that's not right and we fall back to that. Why is he falling back and going into this dark place? Why is he wanting to go there? He doesn't want to wait to be king. He wants to be king immediately. He thinks he can rule in the movie. There's a couple of scenes that's funny where he's roaring and he thinks he's already a big lion and he hears he's roaring. But everybody else can hear, no, you're still a baby, you can't roar. And that's how we sound as believers. We think we're saying all this good stuff to people, but the people who listen to you can hear, you're still a baby. The stuff you're saying is not sounding the way you're hearing it for us. All right, so here Simba's trying to make himself look like this mature lion, and he's still a baby. He's not ready. But Simba chooses what he wants, his way. Not what his father told him, he chooses his way. And we do the same thing, we run after all these sinful stuff that we had in our life before because we don't believe we were cleansed and our old nature and we fall into sin again sometimes, even when we get born again. We don't believe we were washed clean and we fall in the trap, in the lie. In the movie, the next thing that happens, Simba's father, Mufasa, he dies. You know the scene where the stampede comes through and he dies. You can see that Jesus that died for you on the cross and all that to get you into your position. I don't want to go into that, but I want you to see all the things that are happening because Mufasa died Scar thinks he can now enter into a position. And it all came from Simba's choice to go to the dark place. That triggered all this stuff to happen. I mean, if you want to really go to the Bible, it's men, men and man walking in sin that Jesus came to die to stop that thing. But I want to keep it more personal for speaking to you as a person. Put your name, like I said, in Simba's place every time I use that name and see how you walk this thing out. So his father dies, the one that loves him, dies. Like I said, it's a picture of Jesus. But when his father dies, what happened? It automatically made what happen? Simba stepping into his kingdom, his sonship, his rulership. That's what Jesus did on the cross for you. The moment he died, you can step into this that's there for you. If you're willing to be taught. It's there for you. But Simba, listening to the lie of Scar, the enemy, Scar the devil, we use him as a reference to the devil, the hyenas, the demons, tell Simba, no, it's your fault that your father died, you killed him, and Simba believes this. He believes this lie, and he chooses not to take his position because of this lie. Don't we do that sometimes? I've heard it so many times. People will come and say, I want to follow the Lord. But how can the Lord follow me because I did this and I did that? How can He forgive me because I was such a bad person here and I did this? That's exactly what Simba is doing here. He's saying, I can't take over and become who I'm supposed to be because I did this. I killed my father. Or I went to the dark place. Do you see you also do that sometimes? 
people tend to do that. They say, no, but the Lord cannot see me as his son or daughter because I was so bad in my day. How can he forgive me? And that means what? If you think that, it shows me you're listening to Scar, the lion that lies. The one that looks like a lion. The one that lies, your Bible says. You are actually thinking you're very clever, but sorry, you're actually very stupid. You are listening to a lie and you're eating up that lie as the truth. That's what you're walking in. Because of Simba choosing to step away, Simba steps up. Ah, sorry, Scar steps up. And he takes the throne. And he rules. And he rules with fear. The pride lands were full of fear. Nothing was functioning the way it was supposed to function because of him taking rulership. Simba has no choice, but he's got to flee from all his problems. Believers do that. Man, the first time they start sinning and they get caught out because they wanted to do things their way, what is the first reaction they do? They flee. They run away from the church group or from their friends and they run away because it's not, not the way they wanted it. And it's all because they made a choice to go to the dark, dark side, the dark place. So, when he, when he goes to uh, a different place, Simba, he meets up with these two characters, two very unlikely friends, a war dog and a meerkat, what do you call it? Those two become his friends. I mean, those two should not even be together in the first place. Less them being friends with the lion. But they end up being friends. And these friends start to build a strong bond with Simba. But they've got a motto that we all know. Akuna Matata. And that means, this one you will know because you all sang the song. It means no worries. So these two are telling this lion, just follow, be friends with us. Just be with us. Don't worry. Everything's cool. You don't have to worry about anything in life. You don't have to have responsibilities. You don't have to learn anything. Just follow us in life's cool. No worries. And Simba, feeling guilty because what he did, knowing he did wrong, he didn't listen, this is a much easier way out. Just follow these two guys. No worries. All right? So this lion, who's supposed to rule, is at such a wrong place, with such a wrong friends, that he even decides to start eating bugs for food. Not what he's supposed to eat in nature, what he's called to eat. He rather eats insects and stuff. And he thinks that's all cool. He right? starts doing all these weird things and he thinks that's the way it's supposed to be. But you see, it's outside the nature of the lion to eat bugs. Why is he eating bugs now? Because he's still in the lie that was told to him by Scar, who is now ruling so much in Simba's life that Simba had to flee and eat bugs because of the lie. And then he tells himself the bugs are very nice. Huh? And he's listening to his friends the whole time. That's exactly what we do. We think these lies are truths. We think we do are good. So some of us choose this life of no worries and cares. I always say, you know that I say this, it means you are a Christian without backbone. You're not standing for what's right and wrong. You just choose to float and do whatever you want to do. And whatever happens, happens. Eh? But it all sounds good. But this whole thing this lie is doing what to Simba? It's taking him away from what his calling is. It's keeping him very happy, very busy with my friends. But do you realize these friends are also not walking in what they're supposed to walk in? They're also in a lie. 
And so you are listening to your friends that's also walking a line. Most probably the same reason why you are in the line. They did something and now they feel bad about it. But you're listening to them. You're getting advice from your friends. And you're growing in that. Why do we do that? Why did Simba do that? It's easier. It's way easier though. I don't have to have responsibilities. Simba stays there for a long time. Um, they sing that little song in the movie. It's funny in the movie when they sing the song, the, the, Simba walks with the two of them and he's still a baby. Then at the end of the song, they actually sing, we've been singing the song so long, you've grown a what? How many pounds? Because then at the end of the song, he's a mature lion when the song finishes. Um, go watch the movie and you'll get it. But Simba starts growing. In the meantime, things are going from bad to worse in the Pride Lands because of Scar ruling over everything. Remember, I say again, this is all a problem that started with Simba's choice. When he was told, don't go back to your old way, to the dark ways, he went there and this all started to happen. Um, I said, yeah, a disciple by the name of Nala. Who's Nala in the movie? Yeah, his friend, his female friend. When, when Simba was still small, he had a, this girl that he always played with. They actually said he must marry her one day. He didn't like that idea when he was small. This young lioness called Nala, she decides things are so bad She's going to go and look for Simba to bring him back. And eventually she finds him with these two characters living a lie. She does it at great risk of being killed, being persecuted. But she still does that and she goes after him to find him and she, she eventually got him. She starts telling Simba something. She starts talking to Simba, but he's, he answers her in the way that he says, he tells this Nala, you do you, and I will do me, but you do you. That's all that matters, is me, what I want to choose to do. And it's funny, it sounds so familiar that we do that too. You do you, and I'll do me, don't worry. But she's coming to tell him, you're living a lie. You're actually supposed to rule, but you're eating bugs at the moment. And he still fights her in the sense of not wanting to listen to her. That's what happens with us when we sometimes tend to walk away from the Lord in the beginning and people, our other disciples will come and talk to you again. And then it's a hard fight in your, inside of you to say, I'm going to go back. Or I'm going to rather going to stay with these two guys and eat bugs. This is easier than going back and facing the problem that I caused in the first place. Who caused the problem? Simba. Who caused the problem in your life that you're walking in sin again? You. But now you have to make a choice. Do I go back and correct this sin and walk in what I'm supposed to? Or do I just stay and eat bugs and no worries? No cares? It's a difficult choice. Not everybody's man enough to make that choice. But Nala's actually calling him back to his position. But Simba wants to choose the easy way out, not wanting to face his past. But the one that I showed you earlier, a Rafiki, he didn't give up. He's called our friend. Eh? The name Rafiki means our friend. Rafiki starts also pursuing Simba. From a distance, he starts looking and seeing Simba, and he's getting excited. But through his wisdom that he uses, he approaches Simba, Rafiki. And Rafiki tells Simba, when the time's ready, he walks up to Simba and he says to him, you don't even know you were wrong. You don't even know who you are. When we 
are in those sinful places in the wrong places but we're doing wrong stuff and the Holy Spirit comes and tells you you don't even know who you are look where you what you're doing what you're busy with that means you don't know who you are because if you knew who you were you would not be here eating bugs and I think he's very clever the way he, he sees the opening to talk to you because Rafik is actually telling him, you don't know your identity. You don't know who you you don't know who you are. Rafiki takes Simba to a river where there's still waters and says the following. He says, Your father is waiting. As Simba looks into the water, Rafiki asks, can you see him? As Simba looks close to him, Rafiki says something beautiful. There, do you see him? Simba, I don't see anything. Rafiki, look closer. Rafiki. He lives in you. What is somebody seeing there in the water, the reflection? For the first time since he was young and came to this place, and he looks into the water, he sees, man, I look exactly like my father. I can see my father who's living in me. I'm going to play a clip of the scene quickly. A short clip. And remember, you are that Simba looking into the water that's walking in a lie, maybe. It's the same thing I can ask you. Who are you? What will your answer be? Paul says in Colossians 1 27. To whom God is pleased to make known what is the riches of glory of this mystery among Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And there it says it in the movie. He's in you. And he says something that he says, I've never left you. Guys, when you walk into the dark places, the enemy tells us these lies, but the Father, Jesus never left you. It's just you that are believing a lie. He's never left you in those dark places. But here, after a disciple, Nala, spoke to him, he was open when the Spirit came and spoke to him to step into his true position. And I'm not breaking our Fiki, the Holy Spirit, like that, but you understand what I'm saying. He's now open and he, for the first time in a long time, understands who he is. And that's what you are supposed to walk in. Because that's why Scar keeps telling him a lie, because he doesn't want him to understand who he is. The enemy will tell you lies in your life so that you don't understand who you are. Because he wants to keep you at the place where he eat bugs. And we all have different bugs that we eat in our lives. And I mean, you see at the end of the clip where Simba says, please don't leave me. He says, I've never left you. And that's so true. And then the, the, the clip that we saw there ends with, remember who you are. That's so important. Remember who you are. The same thing that Jesus says. He says the same thing. Another thing that stood out for me in that clip is his father there, Mufasa says there, as King I was proud about one thing. He didn't say, you doing this sin and that sin and that sin. He never went to the sin. He said, I'm proud of you as being my son or my daughter because of you, you being my son. That makes me proud. 
when Jesus met up with, with Peter, after Peter denied him three times, Jesus never said to Peter, yeah, but you did this, and you did that, and you did this. He actually showed him love in a deeper way. He didn't go back to the sin. We go back to the sin the whole time. But Rafiki asked him again, who are you? And Simba replies, I am Simba. At that moment, Simba realizes he lived in a lie. And you must also get to that place in your journey when you become born again, you fall back into the wrong stuff. That you know who you are. You're not that sinner in the lie, in the lie, that's stuck in the lie. You must get out of that lie. You need to understand who you are. You need to accept your identity. Some of you need to see that Jesus is in you and that you are His. Stop following the lies that you that you conform to. But now, because of that moment, Simba's ready to back, take back what was his from the beginning. Remember, it was all his from the beginning when he was still a little baby. He was told, this will be one day yours if you grow up. He just chose sin and he, he took him on a big de detour. I will tell you this, if you get born again and you fall into sin, God will not give up on you. He will still pursue you to step into your rightful place. But you need to make a call to step into it at the end of the day. He will never stop pursuing you. But the choice is yours to step into it. He doesn't give up on you. You give up on Him. But here now, someone's ready to take back what was His from the beginning. Everything that the light touches, He wants back. When, this, when he makes this decision and he, he goes back to the pride and Scar realizes that Simba is back to claim his rightful place. Scar tries to make people believe that he is the true king and Simba, Simba's mother says the following. This is so beautiful. When Simba confronts Scar now, Simba's mother says this. A true king's power is his Compassion. No, 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 how loud you can roar. It's your compassion. That shows that you are true in what you're walking. It's your compassion. It says in Matthew 5, 9, I love this, it's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God peacemakers. You see, it doesn't say they're believers. It gives you a purpose in what you must walk in to become that. That brings that. You cannot just be anything here. You've got to be a peacemaker. What's so beautiful is when somebody at that moment, when he took his place, when he's confronting Scar and he's challenging Scar for his rightful position, all of a sudden you will see all Simba's friends, his family, and everything around him steps up and steps into place the way it should be. They are backing him, his family. When you step into place after you went the wrong way, your spiritual family will also be there for you, to help you. To step into this thing that was all along yours. I want to finish off with, to, to understand this. Remember the image I showed you in the beginning when they were sitting on the rock? Mufasa and Simba were sitting there. And he told him, all of this is yours. You can have all of this. You cannot go fight now because you're not ready yet. But do you realize that Simba did not look like his father yet? At all. It was a little lie. When you get born again, you don't look like Jesus yet. At all. But it's okay. Stay humble. Listen to the wisdom that's given to you. And you will grow because at one stage, when you are more mature, 
after a couple of years, when he looked into the water, he saw his father. He started to look like his father, like Jesus. He became less and Jesus became more. In the beginning, you look like you look me, myself, I, or whatever the case may be. But that's not the problem. The problem is don't go back to the lies. Those ideas can bug you, but then you realize, then you, sorry, did you realize when as soon as the fight happened between Scar and Summer, what did they ideas do? They actually ran away and the fight got heated. They couldn't stand the fight. That's exactly how the demons are. They're nothing. If you know who you are. But if you don't know who you are, those behind us, those demons will fight you your whole life and keep feeding you the lie. But they are actually useless. Nothing. That's why they look at the crazy are behind us as a demon perfectly. Because they are in a place because of scar giving them the place. But scar scared the Kofasa or now Simba will take his place with the knees of the Rabbi Kawa or the Dina. And if he's got nothing, the Dina's going to live with nothing. And that's what happened in the movie. Don't get stuck in the dark places in our lives. He's always with you, he's in you. You will become like him one day if you pursue this thing. But don't fall for the lie and think, I don't have to do anything, I, there's no worries. Like I said, it's actually easy for no paper. You don't want to stand on what's right. Don't be like a simple falling for the lie. Even though he heard the truth, he still chose the lie, caused him a long journey to come back. We were just walking to this. The sunship, if you want to call it, that it was given to you. You went on a long detour to come back. So if you went on the long detour, don't go there. You need to know where you should be and what you are. Because everything in life that is yours because of our King. So rule with it wisely in this kingdom that is given to you on this earth. Because the Bible says the kingdom are within you. So rule wisely with this. So next time when you watch this movie, see yourself in Simba's eyes. Go watch the movie again now after you've you know, this. You will see all the little details that I didn't even mention. It will take too long. The conversations that's in the, in the story. And see what is there for you because you are a son of that king. Jesus died for you. That placed you in a position to rule one day. All you have to do is be compassionate and learn through wisdom and you will step into that because it's yours. You don't have to go to the dark places and go eat bugs the whole time. So I really hope this gives you know, a better understanding of your identity in Christ because Christ is your identity. He will stay inside of you. He's always inside of you. So to stop if you are stuck in lies. People that are listening on, on, on YouTube in those places, if you are stuck in a lie, realize why you are stuck. Yes, you might have made a mistake, but it's fine. He's waiting for you. To realize that and you can step out of that bad place and step into his kingdom. Alright. Thanks for watching, please subscribe to our channel and make sure to click the bell notification button to get any notifications when we upload a new video. Stay blessed!